Every Series 7 brush is handmade with unique attention to detail. We start by measuring every strand of the finest Kalinsky hair. Hair is placed into the cannon and tapped down to ensure the hair is smooth with a level tip. The hair is rolled into a precise dome shape to give the perfect point. It's then collected and placed through the guide fit so we have the right quantity of hair for the right brush size. Pulleys are used to tighten the knot into a tuft, which is then inserted into the metal ferrule. The tuft is pulled to the right length for the brush size and then glued into place. Brush heads are checked for blunt hairs under a magnifying glass and then securely fastened to the handle. Every brush is then tested by hand to ensure an excellent point and shape. It takes time and skill, but it's what we've always done, to make the world's finest brushes. Making a Series 7 Kalinsky Sable watercolour brush isn't easy. The largest size brush can take almost a week and a half to make. You can pick up a cheap, synthetic brush for under $2, but a Series 7 could cost you over $300. So why would anyone pay for a brush that costs over 100 times the price? Originally created on the request of Queen Victoria, the Series 7 brush was first made in 1866 and was designed to be the finest possible brush for watercolour painting. Since then, the skill and craftsmanship that goes into making each one of these brushes has remained exactly the same. To achieve this, the company needed skilled brush makers. And so, in 1946, set up a new factory in Lowestoft, England a fishing town with a history of rope making. This factory now makes over 25 million brushes a year. The intricate work and dexterity required means that these brushes are almost exclusively made by women. It takes three years to train, and there are only nine brush makers in the world that can make these top of the range Series 7 brushes. I joined here when I was 16. I worked 18 years and then I had 12 years off and I've been back in Evans, so that's 28 years I've been working for the company. When you first start, you would probably only make a few. You've got to get, like anything, you've got a skill and you build on that and you get to learn the skill and then you get to do the speed. The components play a big part in the cost. Each brush head is made from Kalinsky Sable, a Siberian weasel that's hair is said to cost three times the price of gold by weight. These weasels are hunted sustainably every spring under CITES guidelines across Siberia and Manchuria. Only guard hairs from the tail will do. Kalinsky hairs are chosen because every single strand has a surface of directional interlocking scales, increasing the surface area and giving the hairs their strength. And while many other natural and synthetic hairs are used for brushes, nothing has quite matched the quality of sable. Once the hairs are cleaned and graded, it's time to start making the brush. The wool has to be removed with a comb and the hairs are packaged up and carefully boiled and ironed. The brushes have to be made with hair at its natural length. And the skilled brush makers can effortlessly separate between 28 and 32 millimeter length hairs just with their hands. This skill takes years of training and practice. The nine brush makers each have 27 years of experience on average. Hairs that are blunt or twisted have to be discarded. And most importantly, as each natural hair comes to a point, 
every hair must be the correct way up. The removed upside down hairs can be flipped and reused. Every single hair is checked over by hand. The smallest brush size hairs are just seven millimeters long, shorter than an average eyelash. We can't afford to let standards drop in any way, shape or form. What I would say from that is what this factory has is hand skills. It has individual skills. It has skills that when I have new people come in here, they don't sometimes believe that this kind of work still happens. We show them what people do, they will turn around and say, I'll never be able to do that. But they will be able to do that if they understand that quality comes first. When the hairs are all sorted, they're ready to go into the cannon. The bundle is tied together and gently twisted through. Individual hairs are added or taken away until it's an exact fit. They need to have that fine point to work with, that basically it has that colour carrying capacity, that the brush won't split or do anything that it shouldn't do, basically. Through the hair that we use, through the skills of our makers and how they make them, we've done everything we possibly can to make sure that we have produced the best product we possibly can. Then it's time to attach the handles. The factory uses birchwood handles imported from Italy. The brush is glued into place and then the brush heads are crimped onto the handles. This crimping process bends the metal to shape and keeps the handle tightly attached to the brush. Once the paintbrush is assembled, it needs to be branded and tested. The size and logo of each brush is stamped in gold on the handle. Wet point testing assures that everything works exactly as expected and there aren't any loose or crooked hairs. Each brush is then gummed, a process that gives the brush head its final shape and allows it to bounce back. The shape of the natural hairs gives the brush a wide belly and a fine point. So the key to our brush making is the people and that is the skill. We retain knowledge from generation to generation so we have makers now that are working under an apprenticeship of a 49 year served brush maker who himself had an apprenticeship under another 49 year serving brush maker who was brought into the business under his father who made brushes directly for Queen Victoria. And it's very key that we retain that knowledge throughout the business, generation to generation, and we are now bringing in the next generation to make sure that we uphold the very high quality standards that we base ourselves on.